What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. As you can see by the title and the thumbnail, you know what we're gonna be talking about today. But before we talk about it, I wanna leave a disclaimer. Because some people be doing too much in the comments. When it comes to this topic about Aaliyah, some people be doing too much. Leave your opinion. Everybody, leave your opinion. Let's talk about it, let's discuss it, but just don't do too much. And I also think it's funny how all the different videos about Aaliyah, her career, her success, and her legacy I make, those videos don't get the same amount of views as this type of video. But you know what they say, controversy sells, right? And I'm not doing this for the views. I'm just doing this because I like to gather information. I like to wait on things. I don't like to rush videos like this because there's so much going on, so much that has been happening. Y'all already know. If y'all been keeping up with the news, y'all know. Y'all know. And I just want to give my precise opinion on it all. And y'all can too in the comments. Now let's go. So recently, a few weeks ago, Ali's uncle, Barry Hankinson, appeared on the Dr. Oz show. And he talked about various things from releasing Ali's music on Spotify and streaming services. Oh, and have y'all been running them numbers up? Run them numbers up. Get them albums and songs and singles streaming. Ali's subtitle, One in a Million, I Care For You, is about to come out. Get them numbers up. And, you know, that's been a big thing. I made a video about that. And it's been a great success and it's been billboards all over the world and I've even seen some in Times Square. It's been a great thing. You know, Aaliyah's legacy is looking bigger and brighter than ever. But that controversy from the first album and everything, it still follows Aaliyah's name to this day. 25 years later, 27 years later, that controversy will always follow Aaliyah's name. And that's something that we just got to get used to. Sad to say, but that controversy was all bundled up into her first album, her debut album, is always going to follow her. But like I said before, Aaliyah's legacy is bigger than Surviving R. Kelly. Like, I need y'all to, y'all, some of y'all know, but you know, when it comes to Aaliyah and this, when it comes to Aaliyah, her music and her success and her legacy, a lot of people like to, hmm, hmm, hmm. But oh, Aaliyah and R. Kelly, oh, you're clicking on that. But anyway, I digress he appeared on a show and dr oz was asking him about the whole R kelly situation right and the thing i don't like about it is okay he gave his opinion and he said oh oh i was mad at him and oh this and this and that right like he was so angry he was the angry uncle like oh my god i can't believe he did this to me he betrayed me he betrayed us how can he do this to my niece uh but it's like and then i don't like how he tried to throw Aliyah's mother, Diane Halton, under the bus. Now, here's another thing, you know, a lot of people love to trash Aliyah's mother and blame her, but Aliyah's uncle was a huge part of this. He's the one that even introduced him. He introduced him when Aliyah was 12. R. Kelly was in his 20s. He was in his 20s. Aliyah was 12. He introduced him. He put that whole entire group together, not group, he put the whole entire image together. He paired them together. It was his idea for Aaliyah to work on her whole entire first album, write and produce all the songs. You know what I'm saying? He helmed all of that together. That was his idea. So you mean to tell me you didn't pick up no signs, no red flags, you didn't say anything strange? I said this before in my other video. He knew what it was. He picked up the signs, he saw the red flags, but he didn't care because Aaliyah was becoming successful. Back and forth was on the radio. It was going top five. It went number one on R&B charts. You know, her music videos were spinning on MTV and BET. He didn't care. And I guarantee you this: if that Vibe article with the marriage certificate never came out, they would have let Aaliyah work with R. Kelly on her next album. Let's talk about that. If all that controversy didn't come out, they would have let Aaliyah work with him again. That's just my opinion. What y'all think? I'm just saying. And he talked about how, oh, he thought that Diane Horton, he, the Ali's mother, he thought that she knew everything and, oh, and he had this thing and he was just, another thing with Barry Hankinson is, like I said, he's humanizing himself because before Barry Hankinson, he was almost like a myth. Like you knew of him, you saw old clips of him, but it was like, does he still exist? Like, is he still like, what is he doing? He disappeared for 15, 16, 17 years. Nobody knew what he was doing. Nobody knew who he was. You know, he was a myth, but now he's coming out 
And a lot of people say, oh, it's because of the money, the money grab. So he don't have no problem showing his face and doing these interviews because he want to promote, you know, Ali's music being out so he can get the money for the record label Empire, which is the new record label that he's using and he's signed a deal with to help bring Ali's music to streaming services. But it's kind of like, you know, Barry Hankerson, he's telling his side of the story. You got to give him the credit of he's telling his side of the story. He's coming out. He's showing his face. He's showing his emotions. He's showing his body language. And it's looking even worse on Aliyah's mother's part because she's not coming out. She's not saying nothing. And here's the thing. Like I said in the title, where's Aliyah's mother? I already know some people in the comments want to be sarcastic. Oh, leave Aliyah's mother alone. She don't got to do nothing. Oh, why are you doing this video? And that's another thing. I'm not doing this video for the views. I'm doing this video because this is something that's always bothered me, you know? And it's like, I just want, I feel like when everything finally comes out, there's going to be nothing else to talk about because of so much mystery. Like I said, the mystery of Aliyah's parents. Now the mystery of Aliyah's mother, because there's so much mystery around her mother and even Rashad, you could say, there's always going to be those questions, those doubts, those videos, those topics. It's like sometimes sad to say but that can overshadow Aliyah's legacy her music her success you know how iconic and legendary and influential she is 20 years later because of so much mystery and so many question marks so when t until everything comes out until Aliyah's mother comes out and finally speaks her piece then you know it's not gonna be nothing else to talk about everything's gonna get fleshed out gonna be discussed and then you know people gonna move on now it's like okay you know let's see what else is next for Aliyah's legacy you know, unreleased music, unreleased tracks, you know, new merchandise. That's where I'm going with this. I'm not doing this video to get the views. I'm doing this video to finally hash these things out and just give an update on everything that's going on with this whole entire controversy. And we're going to talk about it down below in the comments some more. But anyway, like I was saying, even at the end of the interview, Dr. Oz was like, we reached out to Aliyah's mother and we didn't have nothing back. So, Diane, if you want to come on the show, just let us know. Like, it's so much mystery behind Aliyah's mother. And what is she doing? How does she, how is she feeling? What is she thinking? How does she look? You know what I'm saying? And I get it. This whole situation is bizarre. I guarantee you, in a million years, nobody never thought that Aliyah's life would end the way it did. How it did. And I know people say it's guilt and this and that. And who knows what happened? That's a lot of allegations between what happened, you know, with Aaliyah's mother and R. Kelly and this and that. Who knows what happened? Nobody was there. None of us was there. It's only he say, she say, they say. But none of us know because none of us was there. But I say that I feel like there is some type of guilt Aaliyah's mother has. And that's a major reason why she has to come out. She's always been private. And I've heard a lot of stories about how, like, you know, when fans would meet Aliyah's mother, she was kind of standoffish and cold. But, you know, it is what it is. You know, at least Aliyah was nice. She was humble. and She was down to earth. She talked to her fans. But it's just like, until Aliyah's mother come out, there's always going to be that aura, that air of mystery. It's always going to be a discussion. It's always going to be a debate. It's always going to be some her name is always going to get trashed and it's sad to say but it's just like she has to she don't have to she has her right she has her freedom she can live wherever she is to the you know for the rest of her life not saying nothing you know that's her prerogative she don't want to say nothing she want to come out she don't want to speak that's up to her but until she does this is never going to go away even when she do it's still going to be a big discussion a huge debate but i feel like it's going to simmer down once everything is finally fleshed out, you know, there's not going to be any more mystery. Everything's going to be talked about. But her mother's not coming out. She's not saying nothing. Rashad, her brother, likes to speak in riddles, leave these miscellaneous statements on Instagram and Twitter. It's like, oh my God. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, we want all Aliyah fans, all the real Aliyah fans watching this, we want Aliyah's legacy to shine bright, you know, as the star she was and still is. But this 
cloud of mystery, this cloud of controversy, is her name always gets brought up, her name is always trending because of it, and it's just unfortunate, it's really sad when you just be like, damn, like, are people ever going to let this go? And the answer is no, until Aliyah's mother come out and speak about it, people are never going to let it go, you know? And another thing, in that Dr. Oz interview, Barry Hankerson, and I've seen three, four, five different interviews where he he talks, he's in the middle of talking about Aaliyah, he starts breaking down and crying, and I'm like, wow, and a lot of people say it's fake, but I can see the true emotion. After not speaking about Aaliyah and her legacy and her music and her situation for over 15 years, I feel like that's true emotion. Like, he he breaks down, he cries, and like, he, he almost like has to catch his breath. And I'm like, wow, like, I feel like it all hits him. It all, it's all hitting him. The silence, his silence, and everything that happened, it all hits him when he starts to talk about her. And, you know, going off into another topic, did y'all see the part, did y'all hear the part where he was talking about the video shoot, the Rock the Boat video shoot, and how his biggest regret is letting her work with Hype Williams, and how he was against Aliyah working with Hype Williams, but, like, it was a push for her to work with Hype Williams. It was such a push for her to work with Hype Williams and he was so against it. I'm like, why was he so against Hype Williams working with Aaliyah for this video? You know, and that's another thing. Hype Williams, he hasn't really come out and spoke about the video shoot and the decisions either because it was another thing. Yeah, I saw the Dame Dash interview he did a few weeks ago where he said something about Lenny Kravitz sent his personal jet a private plane for Aaliyah to ride back on, but instead of doing that, Hype Williams took it. So Aaliyah had to be relegated to a smaller plane, which was unfortunately the one that the accident happened on. And I'm like, wow. I wish Dr. Oz would have pushed and answered and asked him more about that. Why were you so against Aaliyah working with Hype Williams? And what was the aftermath? What did Hype Williams have to say about this? Hype Williams is another one. He's another one that has an aura of mystery because he was the director. He, I, what was the plans? What was the reason? What was the thing about going to the Bahamas and all of that? And you know, Fatima Robinson, Ali's choreographer, she is another one. I feel like she knows a lot, but she's been quiet and real, you know, leaving any windows here and there. And you know, she apparently, she took Aliyah's last pictures, the one where she's sleeping and the one where she's like in the boat throwing up the peace sign with her crew. It's just so bizarre. This whole situation is so bizarre. It's like, wow. You know? But that's just my take on it all. Like, I feel like, is, uh, is Aliyah's uncle lying? I think he still is. He's lying because you know about it. He's trying to throw Diane, Aliyah's mother, under the bus. And it's not right. Barry, you know better. We know better. You know what I'm saying? You mean to tell me you didn't pick up no red flags, no signs? And if I'm not mistaken, even after the controversy, even after the whole big blow up, you know, he still worked with R. Kelly after that. So in a way, it's like you contradicted what you're saying. Like, oh, you were so mad at him and you felt betrayed, but you still worked with R. Kelly after that whole entire debacle? Hmm. Things that make you go, hmm. Because like I said, with Aaliyah's parents, with Aaliyah's uncle, if y'all was on top of things, like y'all was supposed to be, you know, y'all would have been like, what? What's going on? Y'all are going to jail! Period! What? But instead, y'all just let everything happen. Y'all approved everything. Y'all let the album come out. Y'all let her do the videos with him and photo shoots with him. And nobody said nothing until that marriage certificate came out. And it's kind of like, hmm, hmm, all I got to say is, hmm, you know, it's still more details coming out. It's still more things coming out. You know, I'm waiting for more facts and more evidence to come out. You know, I'm going to give my monthly updates on everything. But it's, as everything that's been coming out so far, it's like, wow. Wow, the fact that Aaliyah went through all of that, people don't realize how strong Aaliyah was. The fact that she went through all of that, she persevered through all that, she was still in high school, still maintained a 4.0 perfect GPA, still graduated high school with that 4.0 GPA, still made successful albums, one in a million, and soundtrack singles like Are You That Somebody, and Try Again, and movies. 
her self-titled album, when the VMAs had such a great career ahead of her with the success that she already had, the fact that Aaliyah persevered through all of that is to be commended because she went through a lot, but she never really showed it, you know? And all I got to say is in one way or another, one of these days, one of these years, I just hope that full justice for Aaliyah is served. We all know what happened. If y'all read the news, y'all know what happened with R. Kelly. That's some justice. But until the whole story about Aaliyah's accident and the controversy and everything comes out, her mother finally decides to open up and speak publicly about it all. I feel like that's when justice for Aaliyah is finally going to get served. Right now, things are coming out, but it's sprinkles of it. You know, it's little droplets. We need a whole entire waterfall. You know what I'm saying? Until everything comes out, it's always going to be that little bit of, you know, I feel like justice won't be fully served. Justice will not be fully served until everything comes out. And then we can really relish in Aliyah's legacy and how iconic and legendary and influential she is even 20 years later. You know, I know a lot of people like to click on these videos for the gossip and the controversy, but it's like, Aaliyah, this is, you know what I'm saying? The career and the story of Aaliyah is a daunting one. It's a sad one, but it's also a beautiful one. The way you choose to look at it. The way it ended was tragic. The thing she had to go through was tragic. It was sad. I still think about her every day. You know what I'm saying? She is one, she's one of the only celebrity deaths besides Michael Jackson and a few others that I'm just like, wow. Even 20 years later, I always think about her like, <sighs> it's just really sad. It's tragic. You know, it's gut-wrenching when you think too deep about it. But what we can do all the real fans watching this, what we can do is uphold Aliyah's legacy, keep her legacy alive, keep streaming. You know, let's keep the love for Aliyah high and strong. Aliyah's looking down at all of this. I know she's like, hmm, she would to not like this conflict between her uncle and her mother and brother. She would not like this conflict between her estate and her music label, Black Ground, but you know. Until things come out, until the family fully comes out, until Aliyah's mother and brother fully comes out and speak about it all, these things will not get resolved. But, you know, that's just my take on it all for now. Let's see in the next few weeks and months what else come out. I'm going to do some more update videos about it. And we'll take it from there. Anyways, guys, please don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Thank you for watching and listening. I'll see y'all in the next video.